Greetings, chat. It is I, Dingus the Strix, here once more to bring you an Epic Gamer stream from your favorite Epic Wizard. And today is Thursday, which means we'll be reading uh, we'll be reading some philosophy, as we usually do on these days. Yes. Yes, chat, we'll be reading up on philosophy. Are you prepared to read about today's philosopher, who is Socrates? Yes, the legendary Socrates. Surely you've heard of this man. He's, he's pretty much the, the father of ethics. Ethic philosophy, uh, ethical philosophy chat. What is good? What is evil? This is the, this is the, the study of philosophy this man practically invented. Okay, he didn't probably he didn't actually invent, you know, the study of ethics, but he was definitely a pioneer of such a school of thought. That, that's for certain. That is absolutely true. And also, Chai, I have to say, I apologize for, uh, I apologize for being late today. As I mentioned before in uh, my previous streams, I've gotten, some, I've gotten a new job recently, and uh, my, my schedule has shifted. And, uh, currently I'm in training, and until I get my true schedule, I... I may occasionally be late as I start the stream this week and the next week as well. But hopefully, once my training is done, I can, you know, start streaming at a reasonable time in which everyone will be able to attend. And listen to me talk about philosophy as well as watch me, you know, be an epic gamer as I usually do. Oh yeah, by the way, chat, because of what my current schedule is right now, I may have to end the stream somewhat early-ish. Not like super, super early, like, I I might still go for a almost three-hour stream like I usually do, but uh, I'll be very limited in terms of... um. How long I can go on average. So it might be like two hours and 30 minutes. So I apologize ahead of time for such, you know, for such a short stream. Anywho, chat, because of this, I'm, I'm most likely going to read just Socrates today. Especially given the fact that Socrates is a very prolific pro philosopher. So I think he's worthy of his own dedicated stream. So without further ado, chat, I say, uh, let's get to reading. Let's go to the reading realm and read about Socrates and then discuss his epicness. To the reading realm! Huzzah! And here we are, chat, the reading realm. Where we can read a book in peace and discuss philosophy like the gods do on a daily basis. Alright, chat. Before I begin reading, let me show you the book that I'm reading. Today's book is called, as we've been, as we've been reading from the previous streams, The Lives and Opinions of the Men Philosophers by Diogenes Laertius. Okay. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, Let's get to read. Actually, no. Before we actually start reading Socrates, let's go over real quick what we read last time. Just to give a good recap. And uh, from what I remember from last stream, we read... I think, I think we read... Um, actually, I think about it. Yeah, we started off last stream with uh, Naximander, who was the first philosopher in book two. And what was what was interesting about Anaximander? Uh, I believe Anaximander was oh yeah he's the creator of the globe. He uh, had some theories revolving around fire, 
being the origin of all beings, which is not correct, but, you know, he was, he was theorizing. He also believed the culture was important, and uh, that was about it. Honestly, chat, uh, of the philosophers who I read last stream, I think Anaxagoras was probably the only really interesting one, or at least the one who had enough information about him for us to truly get a good idea about him. Hell, as a matter of fact, here's, uh, here's last week's quote, chat. Here's last week's quote. Let me uh, find it real quick. Here it is. Be silent, for I have the greatest affection for my country. And then he points to heaven. He was uh, definitely another I'm a man of the world type of guy. Which means he would... Re now, just because... Okay, chat, I want to make this distinction clear. Just because you're a quote-unquote man of the world doesn't necessarily mean you are not for your own country, like, actually. I, I think that's a big misconception. You can be a man for the world and want to do things for the, for the greater good of humanity, but also still value your country over others. I don't think those are mutually exclusive. As a matter of fact, I would say that more often than not, they... Most people who tend to be for, you know, everyone also tend to be for their country in actuality. But that's just my opinion. Anywho. Uh, that's pretty much all I can say about Annex. Actually, no. Let me, let me uh, reread about Anaxagoras real quick, chat. Before we get into Socrates. Because Anaxagoras, he had, a, he had some interesting stuff here. Anaxagoras. Where is his page? I lost his page, damn it. I was just on Anaxagoras. Ah, there he is. So to, so to uh, sum up Anaxagoras, he was a pupil of Anaximenes. And he, okay, so he was the first philosopher who was attributed to mind to matter, beginning his prestige on the subject of following matter. All things are mixed up together. Then mind came and arranged them all in distinct order. In other words, he's uh, proclaiming that uh, things just kind of existed and it was an intelligent being that put them into place later on. He was born wealthy. And uh, he was known for his magnanimity. And what else here? Oh yeah, here's a here's a here's actually a good thing about uh Anaxagoras. He asserted that the sun was a mass ball of burning iron. And uh, he was tried for it. <laughs> People wanted him dead because he said that the sun was just a burning ball of burning iron, like a fiery ball of flame. Which is not too far off. But yet, people wanted him dead for it because, you know, at the time, they heavily believed in, you know, Apollo and the sun was actually a god. And they didn't like that he asserted it was just a ball of burning iron and they wanted him dead for it. Even though Anaxagoras was probably closer to the truth than they probably had realized. But of course, him being a philosopher and having his own ideas means he's going to be put up to scrutiny against, um... His fellow peers who may not, you know, dabble in philosophy and just use the gods as a means to simplify, you know, their reality. That, that was just kind of life back in the day. Hell, it's kind of like life right now, except not as extreme. Not, not as extreme, I'll say. Okay, let's see here. Anything interesting uh, to point out as well? I'm trying to speed read this right, real quick, chat, because, you know, honestly, I just kind of want to get to Socrates, if I'm being honest. Because, uh, I mean, honestly, chat, if you want to see what I said about Anaxagoras, you can, you can go to my channel and uh, look at last Thursday's stream where I go to, where I talk about Anaxagoras, as well as other philosophers in depth. Okay, let me take away Anaxagoras' quote off screen. 
And then now we can begin reading about Socrates, because that's what you're really here for. You're really here for Socrates. That's what you're really here for, chat. So let me deliver to you Socrates. Let's begin reading about Socrates. So without further ado, chat, listen. <clears throat> Life of Socrates. Socrates was the son of Sophroniscus, a sanctuary, and of Penariti, a midwife, as Plato records in his Theatetus. He was a citizen of Athens, of the borough of Alopeci. Some people believed that he assisted Euripides in his poems. In reference to which idea, Nesimachus speaks as follows. The Phrygians, sorry, sorry, I said that wrong. The Phrygians are a new play of Euripides, but Socrates has laid the main foundation. Again and again, he says, Euripides, patched up by Socrates. And Callius, in his captive, says, Are you so proud, giving yourself such as? And well I may, for Socrates is the cause. And Aristophanes says in his clouds, This is Euripides, who doth compose those argumentative wise tragedies. But having been a pupil of Anaxagoras, as some people say, but of Damon, as the other story goes, related by Alexander in his successions, after the condemnation of Anaxagoras, he became a disciple of Archelaus, the natural philosopher. And indeed, Aristo... Aristo... <laughs> These Greek names, shall I swear. Aristo Zenus says that he was very intimate with him. But Durius says that he was a slave and employed in carving stones. And some say that the graces in the Acropolis are his work and they are clothed figures. And that it is in reference to this that Titan says in his silly, from them proceeded the stone polisher, the reasoning legislator, the enchanter, of all the Greeks making them subtle arguers, a cunning pendant, a shrewd attic quibbler. For he was very clever in all rhetorical exercises, as Idomeneus also assures us. But the thirty tyrants forbade him to give him lessons in the art of speaking and arguing, as Xenophon tells us. And Aristophanes turns him into ridicule in his comedies, as making the worse appear the, re the better reason. For he was the first man, as Favorinus says in his Universal History, who in conjunction with his disciple Aeschines, sorry, Aeschines, taught men how to become orators. And Idomenes makes the same assertion in his essay on the Socratic school. He likewise was the first person who conversed about human life, and was also the first philosopher who was condemned to death and executed. And Aristoxenus, the son of Spintharus, says that he lent money in usury, and that he collected the interest and principal together. And then when he got the interest, he lent it out again. And Demetrius of Byzantium says that it was Cretan who made him leave his workshop and instruct men out of admiration which he conceded for his abilities. Okay, chat, let's, uh, let's stop reading there and go over what was just read, okay? We no longer need to listen. Chat, let us discuss. Let us discuss. 
So, so far, what do we know about Socrates? Well, he was definitely a prolific figure, which I, I use that word a lot, prolific. But prolific, I think, really, you know, uh, explains a lot about Socrates, especially com more, more so compared to the other philosophers I've read until now. Because honestly, when it comes to philosophers, chat, a lot of people tend to uh, refer to these three in particular. Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle. And for good reasons. Those three had a heavy hand in shaping the Western world. So it makes sense that a lot of our... Uh, a lot of the information of the past we have is a lot, of, is, um, a lot about them. More so about Plato and Aristotle than Socrates, because Socrates was definitely from an older time. But uh, a lot of people still do bring Socrates up. And he, like I said before, he is essentially the foundation of ethics and philosophy. And apparently he resided in Athens. He may, he may or may not have been a slave. That seems to be up in the air. He was definitely, uh... He was definitely not rich, that's for certain. And apparently he may have been a student of Anaxagoras. Which, if I recall correctly from last week, Anaxagoras, while not necessarily an ethical philosopher... He sort of, he sort of, um, how should I say, he sort of, um, he kind of almost led to ethics, in a way. Like, he, he, he didn't, like, like, ethics was not his field of stu study, by any means. But he still brought it up on occasion, which I think, perhaps, uh, Socrates may have picked up on that and gained more of a bigger interest than Anaxagoras ever did. And then, of course, there was also um, Archelaus, who is definitely a master of Socrates, as we read last week. And Archelaus is actually the person who truly introduced to Socrates about ethical philosophy. So I guess, in a way, maybe it was Archelaus who was actually the progenitor of, eth of uh, ethical philosophy. And Socrates just kind of, you know, improved upon it. But honestly, that's just kind of, that's just kind of me theorizing. We don't know the truth for certain. We only have very little information about what happened in the past. I mean, we, we know how the, the Greeks and the Romans lived, but we don't know the finer details, you know. About the things that really went down. Anywho, what else about uh, Socrates? Oh yeah, he was very clever in rhetorical exercises. Okay, yeah, he liked the he liked to uh, practice with his mind. He was very good at speaking and arguing. So he, I guess you could say he was a natural-born debater. Oh yeah, that's right. Socrates was actually uh, sentenced to death. Anaxagoras actually almost uh, had the same fate, but luckily there was someone to speak up for Anaxagoras. Unfortunately, there was no one behind Socrates to speak up for him, and uh, well, Socrates met an unfortunate end. But despite, you know, I do remember this chat, despite Socrates having an unfortunate end, I remember Socrates being very just not not like indifferent as in like cold, but indifferent as in he just accepts what was just happening. Like he just came to terms with it and was just very at peace when he was being executed. And I think Socrates um, being very at peace as he got executed really paved the way in terms of ethical thought, in terms of, you know, how a human should live to other philosophers. Which we'll be reading more in a second. 
unless anyone else in the chat has anything to say about what I've said so far, or whatever in the book. If not, then I shall continue. I shall continue. So, discussion time is over, and now it is time to listen. Ahem. <clears throat> Where was I? Oh yeah, I was on number six. He then, perceiving the natural philosophy had no immediate bearing on our interests, began to enter upon moral speculations, both in his workshop and in the marketplace. And he said that the objects of his search were whatever good or harm can befall man in his own house. And very often, while arguing and discussing points that arose, he was treated with great violence and beaten, and pulled about and laughed at and ridiculed by the multitude. But he bore all this with great equanimity, so that once, when he had been kicked and buffeted about, and had borne it all patiently, and someone expressed his surprise. He said, Suppose an axe had kicked me. Would you have had me bring an action against him? And this is the account of Demetrius. But he had no need of traveling, though most philosophers did travel, except when he was bound to serve in the army. But all the rest of his life, he remained in the same place. In an argument of spirit, he used to dispute with all who would converse with him. Not with the purpose of taking away their opinions from them, so much as of learning the truth. As far as he could do so himself. And they say that Euripides gave him a small work of Heraclitus to read and asked him afterwards what he thought of it. And he replied, What have I understood is good. And so, I think, what I have not understood is, only the book requires a daily, a daily diver to get at the meaning of it. He paid great attention also to the training of the body, and was also, sorry, was always in excellent condition himself. Accordingly, he joined in the expedition to uh, Anthropolis, and he it was who took up and saved Xenophon in the Battle of Dilium, when he had fallen from his horse. But when all the Athenians had fled, he retreated quietly, turning around slowly and watching to repel anyone who attacked him. He also joined in on the expedition to Podidia, which was also undertaken by sea, for it was impossible to get there by land, as the war impeded on the communication. And they say that on his occasion, he, re he remained the whole night in one place, and that though he had deserved the prize of preeminent valor, he yielded it to Alcibiades, to whom Aristippus, in the fourth book of his treatise on the luxury of the ancients, says that he was greatly attached. But Ion of Chios says that while he was a very young man, he left Athens and went to Samos with Archelaus. And Aristotle says that he went to Delphi, and Favorinus also, in the first book of his commentaries, says that he went to Isthmus. He was a man of great firmness of mind and very much attached to democracy. It was plain from his not submitting to Critias. When he ordered him to bring Leon of Salamis, a very rich man, before the 30, before, for the purpose of being murdered, and he alone voted for the acquittal of the ten generals. And when it was in his power to escape out of prison, he would not do it. And he reproved those who bewailed his fate, 
and even while in prison he delivered those beautiful discourses which we still possess. He was, con he was a contented and venerable man. At once, as Pamphela says in the seventh book of her commentaries, when Elizabethes offered him a large piece of ground to build a house upon, he said, But if I wanted shoes, and you had given me a piece of leather to make myself shoes, I should be laughed at if I took it. And often when he beheld the multitude of things which were being sold, he would say to himself, how many things are there which I do not want? And he was continually repeating these iambics. For silver plates and purple use for law. For actors on the stage, for not for men. And he showed his scorn of Oculus, the, Ma the, Ma the Macedonian, and Scopus, the Crononian, and the Neorag. Locus of Larissa, when he refused to accept their money and to go visit them. And he was so regular in his way of living that it happened more than once when there was a plague at Athens, when he was the only person who did not catch it. <sighs> wow, that's, a, that's quite a bit. Chuck, before I read on to uh, the tenth section here, let's 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 discuss that real quick, cause um that was a lot. That was a lot. That was kind of juicy, Jack. We got we got a lot of good stuff about Socrates here. So it, it wasn't just the fact that he was good at arguing, Chad. This man kind of went out of his way to have debates with people, but not necessarily to prove you wrong. It was for his own purpose of learning. This man was always on a journey. He wanted to understand your position, so he would go into a debate with you so that he could learn your position and see if you had the ability to rationalize it. Which, honestly, is the proper way to debate, in my opinion. Which is to, you know, properly uh, rationalize your position. You don't necessarily need to be correct in certain debates. You just need to, you know, be able to rationally, you know, uh, rationally uh, ex explain why you believe in what you do. Which isn't really asking for much, you know. You could back up with your, your position with facts, or maybe you just want to just display your rationale on the matter. What ha whatever happened to healthy debate, Chad? Whatever happened to healthy debate? Healthy debate is dead, chat. Most people just want drama. Drama is what really sells. Drama is what people are here for. It's disgusting. <laughs> it's a porn. No, not porn. A porn is what I meant to say. A porn. Why do people love drama so much when you could be reading philosophy? Oh. What I'm chatting this way is. Anyway. <clears throat> uh, it says right here he may have been the first person to converse about human life, which I doubt that's true. But, uh... He, he definitely is one of the pioneers of ethics, that's for certain. Oh yeah, that's right, chat. Uh, Socrates was buff. Socrates hit the gym, chat. This fucking nerd hit the gym, chat. Learn from Socrates, chat. Just because you're a fucking nerd, that is not an excuse for you to be a lippy pussy, chat. Hit the gym and know how, know how far you can take your body, Jack. So says Socrates, who was in the army and knew how to throw down. This was the philosopher one saw. Actually, as a matter of fact, is he the first philosopher that we've read so far that actually talked about uh, being physically fit and 
having the capacity to fight. Because other philosophers we talked about, chat, um, I mean, they all had jobs. Uh, one guy, I believe Thales was, I keep mixing this up, but I think it was, Thales was, I can't, I don't remember if he was a merchant or if he was, uh, an economist or something. He was one of the two. Solon was like a farmer. No, no, he wasn't a farmer. No, Solon was a lawgiver. Yeah, Solon made laws. And uh, I think I think Beas was a farmer, or something, uh, something or such, such. Yeah, but yeah, essentially, pretty much everyone had a farm. Socrates is honestly the first warrior philosopher, a guy who. Knew, knew how to throw down and espouse infinite wisdom. So again, that's a first. We have our first philosopher in terms of the, the, the traditional means of badassery, which is, you know, being physically fit and being into what I envisioned him to be a Chad, even though I think we have statues of Socrates. He's kind of ugly. <laughs> but that's fine. That's fine. Socrates definitely fucks Okay, let's see here. Anything else of interest? Uh, oh yeah, he, he received a reward. A prize for preeminent valor, but he decided to give it to someone else. Because I guess he just didn't give a shit about rewards. And, uh... Oh yeah, I guess he was also very resilient. As I see here, he did not submit to Critias when uh, Critias had ordered him to bring Leon of Salamis so he can be murdered. I guess I guess Socrates was like, Hell no, I will not bring this man! I will not bring this man to do your evil bidding! No! If you wish to seek him, seek him yourself! Which, good on you, Socrates, good on you! Good man, good man. Very, very noble figure, this Socrates. And what else is here? Da, 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 da. Oh yeah, something about shoes or some shit. Uh, he said he would look stupid if he fucking took a piece of leather, a leather if he wanted shoes or some shit. I, also, I might have to reread that because I'm not sure exactly what he means. And even though I said I'm not too tired today, chat, I'm still kind of tired. So my uh, my my thinking into what the philosophers are saying is going to be kind of limited for this stream. Just 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 a little bit, just a little bit. And what's here? Oh yeah, he was a contented and venerable man. Da -da 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 -da. Oh yeah, he also just kind of refused money to go visit people. I don't, I don't necessarily know the finer details as to why Socrates was just like, "I'm not going to visit you." I'm sure there's more to this story, but knowing Socrates, it was probably so. It, it was, or rather, it was probably a bribe for something, and maybe Socrates just, on a moral level, didn't approve, or maybe an ethic level, mind you. But that's just my, uh, that's just my theory. I don't know that for certain. Anyway, chat, that's all I can really say for now, given what I've read. Let's continue, if you have, unless you have uh, something to say in response. If not, then it is time to end the discussion and listen. <clears throat> Aristotle said that he had two options. Ooh. The first was Xanthipi, Zen by whom he had a son named Lampropolis. The second was Myrto, the daughter of Aristides, the just, and he took her without any dowry, and by her he had two sons, Sophroniscus and Menexenus. But some say that Myrto was his first wife, 
and some among whom are Sartarus and Hieronymus. 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 Goddamn. Hiero. Hieronymus. Hieronymus of Rhodes says that he had them both at the same time. For they say that the Athenians, on the account of the scarcity of men, passed the vote with the view of increasing the population that a man might marry one citizen and might also have children by another who should be legitimate, on which account Socrates did so. And he was a man able to look down upon any who mocked him. He prided himself upon the simplicity of his way of life, and never exacted any pay from his pupils. And he used to say, that the man who ate with the greatest appetite had the least need for of delicacies, and that he who drank with the greatest appetite was the least inclined to look for a drought which is not an ad. And those who want fewest things are nearest to the gods. And thus, much indeed, one may learn from the comic poets, who, without perceiving it, praise him in the very matters for which they ridicule him. Aristophanes speaks thus. Prudent man who thus with justice long for mighty wisdom. Happiness will be your lot in Athens, and all Greece too, for you've a noble memory and plenty of invention. And patience dwells within your mind, and you are never tired. Whether you're standing still or walking, and you care not for cold, nor do you long for breakfast time, nor are given to hunger, but wine and gluttony you shun, and all such kinds of follies. And, Amipisius, god damn these names, Jack, Amipisius, introduces him on the stage in a cloak, and speaks thus of him. O oh, Socrates, among few men the best, and among many vainest, here at least, so here at last, you come to us courageously, but where, where did you get that cloak? So strange a garment, some letter cutter must have given you, by way of joke, and yet this worthy man, though so hungry, never flatters anyone. Aristophanes, too, exposes his contemptuous and arrogant disposition, speaking thus. You strut along the streets and look around you proudly, and barefoot many ills endure and hold your head above us. And yet, sometimes he adapted himself to the occasion and dressed up handsomely. As for instance, in the Banquet of Plato, where he is represented as to find Agathon. He was a man of great ability, both in exhorting men to and dissuading them from any course. As for instance, having discourse with Theotetus on the subject of knowledge. He sent him away almost inspired, as Plato says. And when Euthyphron had commenced a prosecution against his father for having killed a foreigner, he conversed with him on the subject of piety and turned him from his purpose. And by his exhortations, he made Lysis a most moral man. For he was very ingenious at deriving arguments from existing circumstances. And so he mollified his son Lamproscus when he was very angry with his mother. As Xenophon mentions somewhere in his works, 
and he wrought upon Glaucon, the brother of Plato, who was desirous to meddle with the affairs of the state, and induced him to abandon his purpose because of this want of experience in such matters as Xenophon relates. And on the contrary, he persuaded uh, Carmidas, or sorry, Carmidas, or is it Carmidas or Car Carmidas, to devote himself to politics. Because he was a man very well calculated for such business. He also inspired uh, Hippocrates, the general with courage, by showing him the Gamecocks of Midias, the barber, clubbing themselves against those of Callias. And Glocanides said that the state ought to keep him carefully, as if he were a pheasant or a peacock. He used to also say that it was a strange thing that everyone could easily tell what property he had, but was not able to name all his friends or even tell their number. So careless were men on the subject. Once when he saw Euclid exceedingly anxious about some dialectic arguments, he said to him, Oh, Euclid, you will acquire a power of managing the sophists, but not of governing men. For he thought that subtle hair-splitting on these subjects was quite useless, as Plato also records in the uh, Euthydemus. And when Carmidas offered him some slaves with a view of his making a profit of them, he would not have them. And as some people say, he paid no regard to the beauty of Elisabetes. He used the praise leisure as the most valuable of possessions, as Xenophon tells us in his banquet. And it was a saying of his that there was only one good, namely knowledge, and only one evil, namely ignorance, that riches and high birth had nothing estimable, sorry, estimable in them, but that, on the contrary, they were wholly evil. Accordingly, when someone told him that the mother of uh, Antithenes was a Thracian woman, did you suppose, said he, that so noble a man must be born of two Athenians? And when Phaedo was reduced to the state of slavery, he'd ordered Crito to ransom him and taught him and made him a philosopher. And moreover, he used to learn to play on the lyre. When he had time, saying that it was not absurd to learn anything that one did not know. And further, he used frequently to dance thinking such an exercise good for the health of the body, and Xenophon relates in his banquet. He used also to say that the daemon foretold the future. Sorry, sorry, <clears throat> the demon. The demon foretold the future to him, and that to begin well was not a trifling thing, but yet not far from a trifling thing. And that he knew nothing except for the fact of his ignorance. Another saying of his was that those who bought things out of season at an extravagant price expected never to live till the proper season for them. Once when he was asked what was a virtue of a young man, he said to avoid excess in everything. And he used to say that it was necessary to learn geometry only so far as might a, as it might enable a man to measure land for the purposes of buying and selling. And when Europe and God damn it, and when Euripides in his Og had had spoken thus of virtue, tis best to leave subjects undisturbed. He rose up and left the theater, saying that it was an absurdity to think of it to think it right to seek for a slave if one could not find him. But to let virtue 
be altogether disregarded. The question was once put to him by a man whether he would advise him to marry or not. He replied, Whichever you do, you will repent it. He often said that he wondered at those who made stone statues. When he saw how careful they were that the stone might be like a man it was intended to represent. But how careless they were of themselves as to guarding against a being like the stone. He used also to recommend young men to be uh, con constantly looking in the glass, in order that they, if they were handsome, they might be worthy of their beauty, and if they were ugly, they might conceal their unsightly appearance by their accomplishments. He once invited some rich men to dinner, and when uh, Zanathippi was ashamed of their insufficient appointments, he said, Be a good cheer. For if our guests are sensible men, they will bear with us. And if they are not, uh, we need not care about them. He used to say that other men lived to eat, but that he ate to live. Another saying of his was that to have a regard for the worthiness, sorry, for the worthless multitude was like the case of a man who refused to take one piece of money of four drachmas as it were bad, and then took a heap of such coins and admitted them to be good. When uh, Aeschines said, I am a poor man, I have nothing else, but I give you myself. Do you not, he replied, perceive that you are giving me what is of the greatest value? He said to someone who was expressing indignation at being overlooked when the thirty had seized them on the supreme power. Do you then repent of not being a tyrant too? A man said to him, The Athenians have condemned you to death. And nature, he replied, has condemned them. But some attribute this answer to Anaxagoras. When his wife said to him, You die undeservedly. Would you then, he rejoined, have me deserve death? He thought once that someone appeared to him in a dream and said, On the third day, you'll come to the lovely Pythia. I'm oh, sorry, I read that wrong. Pythia. There we go. Pythia. And so he said to uh, Isakines, In three days I shall die. And when he was about to drink the hemlock, Apollodorus presented him with a handsome robe that he might inspire in it. And he said, Why was my own dress good enough to live in and not good enough to die in? When a person said to him, such an one speaks ill of you. To be sure, said he, for he was never learnt to speak well. When uh, Anathene, sorry, Antisthenes turned the ragged side of his cloak to the light, he said, I see your silly vanity through the holes of your cloak. When someone said to him, Does that not does not that man abuse you? No, said he. For that does not apply to me. It was a saying of his too. That it is a good thing for a man to offer himself cheerfully to the attacks of the comic writers. For then, if they say anything worth hearing, one will be able to mend. And if they do not, then all they say is unimportant. Woo, I read a lot. Hold on, chat. We are not done with uh, Socrates yet. Holy crap. Uh, there's a couple of pages left for him, but uh, I think right now is a good time to take a quick break from, well, my reading. We're still going to, you know, stream. We're just going to discuss. Oh, sorry. Discuss. Let's discuss all the shit I read. Holy crap. <clears throat> so where do I start off from? I started off on, I believe, 10. So to begin with, 
Uh, he had uh, two wives over the course of his life. One of them named was um, Xanthope. And uh, someone named Myrto. And apparently he had some kids. Ones whose name was, uh, what was it? Lam Lamprocles. Lamprocles. And. Oh, and possibly Myrto. Oh, God. Wait, what? What the hell? What am I reading? Oh, okay, okay, okay. So it was up for debate on whether or not Myrto was either. So not Myrto. Myrto. Or Meyer. 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 Myrto. We'll call her Myrto. 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 Myrto may have been his daughter or his wife. It was one of the two. I highly doubt it was both, but you, know, you never know, Chad. You, you, you don't know what the fuck happened back in those days. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm not saying Socrates had a daughter wife, but uh, if he if he did, then who would really know? You know, who would really know? I mean, all we know for a fact is that Lamprothes was his son. That, that seems to be the only universally agreed upon thing in this book I see. Whereas Myrto may or may not have been his daughter or wife. Or daughter wife. And if he and if he did have uh, Myrto as a wife and had kids with her, then their children would have been... Oh wait, never mind. So it would have been Lampropes. Okay, then. Moving on from that awkward tidbit of information. Him. Oh, yeah, apparently this man just strutted. This, this, this fucking guy, as he's, like, walking through Athens, like, he owns the place. Like, <laughs> I'm above you all. Okay, it wasn't, it wasn't really like that. It was more so, like, <laughs> I am above those who look down upon me. You think you're looking down upon me, but I'm actually looking down upon you! For I am truly wise! I am Socrates! And apparently a lot of people did not like that. A lot of people would ridicule him. A lot of people would just talk shit about Socrates. Which, to be fair, given what we read before, this man likes to get into random debates with people, so... <laughs> So maybe the ridicule was kind of warranted. Or who knows, maybe he was right about the things that he was debating about. After all, the the other philosophers seemed to look at him and think, Oh wow, Socrates, you are just a really intelligent man. You inspire me to get into philosophy. I mean, he is the, he is the teacher of Plato. And while Plato is... Uh, I don't think Plato's dumb. Plato is actually very intelligent, but uh, I don't know how much you know about Plato, chat, but Plato is obsessed with forms, and it's really weird, like really weird, you know, like, I don't know how Plato came up with the form theory, but pretty much everyone told him to chill the fuck out when it came to form. <laughs> So, yeah, I don't, I don't think Plato is necessarily a reflection of Socrates. I, I think I think Plato was just kind of his his own mess. But we'll, we'll, we'll get to Plato eventually. We'll, we'll, we'll get to Plato eventually. Let's, let's maintain our focus on Socrates. Let's see here. Da -da 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 -da. You've got some poems written about him from uh, Aristophanes, Amenpiesius. I said I said that name really wrong. Aristophanes. Uh, Plato seems to praise him a lot. I mean, hell, he's written books about him. Because I think I think Socrates was another one of those philosophers who didn't write shit. Which you, you would be, chat, you would be surprised to know that a lot of the most famous philosophers of old that we like to talk about a lot didn't write didn't write jack shit. <laughs> 
They didn't write anything. The only reason why we know so much about him is because other people wrote about these guys. Whether they whether they were students or um or if like they were like rival philosophers or something. That is the only time you had any information about these philosophers. So anything that comes out of Diogenes Laertius' mouth, take it with a grain of salt, because we don't know for a fact if this is true. Diogenes is only going off what other people said about this one guy, you know? And I'm not saying that any of the philosophers are lying, but um there are some philosophers in this book where I kind of get the sneaking suspicion that they might be lying about some things. <laughs> Epicurus. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, not, not to go off on a tangent chat, but I actually did read uh, the philosophy of Epicurus on my own time, and it was a very interesting read. Epicurus has a lot of interesting ideas that definitely contributed to the modern, uh, to the modern day. More so on the natural philosophy side, specifically uh, science. Not so much ethics, I want to say. There's some ideas of ethics that came from Epicurus that were kind of okay. But there's some other shit he believed in. I was just like, what the hell? Huh? Ugh. But like I said, that we, we, we can talk about Epicurus some other time. Let's stick to Socrates. <clears throat> okay, where am I? Da -da 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 -da. Oh yeah, and uh... Circumstances, he also mollified his son when he was very angry with his mother. Hold on, Chad. There's a, there a good quote I saw in here. We definitely gotta get a Socrates quote, Chad. I mean, it's Socrates. We can't, we can't have a stream without getting a quote from Socrates. And I know for a fact I saw one. I, I read it out loud. I definitely read a good quote out loud. Actually, let me see if I can find it. Uh, oh, yeah, there it is. That's that's a good quote. As a matter of fact, let me let me type that out for you, chat. Let me let me type out that quote cuz uh it's actually a rather good one. Also, uh, also, let me just make sure I'm not uh, lost in terms of where I am in the book. I'm going to be on 17. Okay, okay, okay. So 17. Ahem. Okay, let's get let's get the quote up. Let's get the quote up. All right. Time to get our quote of the day, chat. Goodbye, Maximoros! Now it is time for uh, Socrates. Well, Socrates says... To avoid excess in everything. Yeah, there you go. To avoid excess in everything. Socrates. There we go. That's a, that's a good quote. And honestly, I agree with it. To avoid excess in everything. Uh, never operate in extremes, Jack. There are very few extremes that are actually kind of good. Which, that's a discussion for another time, but generally speaking, uh, the, the term, or rather the phrase, uh, too much of a good thing can be a bad thing is true. You can go overboard in things, and when you become uh, unbalanced in your life, that's when shit really hits the fan. Regardless of the direction that your uh, life is Un, uh, un, 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 balance towards, rather. 
And Socrates is definitely a wise man to recognize this. Okay, let's see here. What time is it? Okay, it's like 8.17 right now, chat. Uh, we have approximately... Oh, uh, I said two pages, but in, in reality, it's more like... What you know, it's some... Um, I would say it's two and a half. Yeah, we, we got two and a half pages left. So, let's continue reading. Oh, hello there, Daimao. How are you? Sorry for the, uh, the late hello. I didn't notice you there. I had it mostly on Rumble. And I constantly switch between Odyssey and Rumble to, uh, say hi to people. How are you doing today, my friend? And am I about to chant a spell? I'm always casting spells, uh, Dynal. You know this. You own you. Anyways. <clears throat> oh, so let me refresh my Odyssey stream just to make sure that you're not currently speaking right now and I'm missing it. <laughs> okay. But anyways, uh, let me continue reading. <clears throat> Let's see here. Da -da 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 -da. No more discussion. It is time to listen. And we are on 17, if I recall correctly. He said once to Zanthipi, who first abused him and then threw water at him. Oh God, an abusive wife. What the hell? Did I not say that Zanthipi Zithopi was thundering now, and would soon reign, when Elisabetes said to him, The abusive temper of Zinnip and Zithopi is intolerable. But I, he rejoined, am used to it, and just as I should be if I were always hearing the noise of a pulley. And you yourself endured to hear geese cackling. To which Elisabetes answered, Yes, but they bring me eggs and goslings. Well, rejoined Socrates, and Xanthope brings me children. Once he attacked, sorry, once she attacked him in the marketplace, and tore tore his cloak off. His his friends advised him to keep her off his hands. Yes, by Jove, said he, that while we are boxing, you may all cry out, "Well done, Socrates! Well done!" Uh, Xenophipi. Sorry, Xenthipi. And he used to say that one ought to live with a rest of whooping. Uh, sorry, whooping. A rest of whooping. <laughs> That's not what he said, child. What he actually said was a rest of woman. Just as horsemen manage violent tempered horses, and as they, said he, when they have once mastered them, are easily able to manage all others. So I, after managing Xanthope, can easily live with anyone else, whatever. <laughs> that's a that's a very interesting thing to say, Socrates. I'm I'm gonna take note of that. Chat, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back to that for a discussion. Just just so you know, just so you know. Socrates says something very interesting there. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> And it was in consequence of such sayings and actions as these that the priestess of Delphi was witness in his favor. When she gave a Carifon, sorry, Carifon, this answer, which is so universally known. Socrates of all mortals is the wisest. In consequence of which answer, he incurred great envy. And he brought envy also on himself by convicting men who gave themselves airs as fo of folly and ignorance. And undoubtedly he did to Anitus. And as is shown in Plato's Mino. But he, not being able to bear Socrates' jesting, first of all, set Aristophanes to attack him. And then persuaded Miletus to institute a prosecution against him on the grounds of impiety. 
and of corrupting youth of the city. Accordingly, Melitus did institute the prosecution, and uh, Polyukus pronounced the sentence, and Fivarinus records in his Universal History. And Polycrates, the sophist, wrote the speech which was delivered as Hermippus says, not Anatus, as others say. And Lycan, the demagogue, prepared everything necessary to support the impeachment. But Antithenes, in his successions of the support, sorry, sorry, of the philosophers, and Plato in his apology, say that these men brought the accusation. accusation. Anatus and Lycan and Miletus. Anatus, acting against him on the behalf of the magistrates, and because of his political principles, of whom Socrates used to pull to pieces. But Favorinus, in the first book of the commentary, says that the speech of uh, Polycrates against Socrates is not the genuine one. For in it there it mention made of the walls having been restored by Conon which took place six years after the death of Socrates. And certainly this is true. But the sworn informations on which the trial proceeded were drawn up in this fashion. For they were preserved to this day, says, uh, says Fibarinus in the temple of Sibili. Sibili. Melitus, the son of Mel Melitus, of Pythos, impeaches Socrates, the son of Sophroniscus, of Alopeci. Socrates is guilty inasmuch as he does not believe in the gods whom the city worships, but introduces other strange deities. He is also guilty inasmuch as he corrupts the young man, and the punishment he has incurred is death. But the philosopher, after Lysias had prepared a difference, sorry, defense for him, read it though, so read it through and said, It is a very fine speech, Lysias, but it's not suitable for me, for it was manifestly the speech of a lawyer rather than of a philosopher. And when Lysias replied, How is it possible that if it is a good speech, it should not be suitable to you? He said, Just as fine clothes and handsome shoes would not be suitable to me. And when the trial was proceeding, Justice of Tiberius in his garland says that Plato ascended the tribune and said, I, men of Athens, being the youngest of all those who have mounted the tribune. And then he was interrupted by the judges. Who cried out um, something in Greek? <laughs> it's not translated. That has to say, calm down. Oh, there's the translation. So when he had been condemned by 281 votes, being six more than were given in his favor, and when the judges were making an estimate of what punishment or fine should be inflicted on him, he said that he ought to be fined 520 drachmas. But Eubelides says that he admitted that he deserved a fine of 100. And when the judges raised an outcry at this proposition, he said, My real opinion, that as a return for what has been done by me, I deserve a maintenance in the pritium, sorry, pritanium for the rest of my life. So they condemned him to death by 80 votes more than they had originally found him guilty. And he was put into prison. And a few days later, afterwards, he drank the hemlock, having held many admirable conversations in the meantime, which Plato has recorded in the Phaedo. He also, according to some accounts, 
composed a pean which begins, Hail Apollo, King of Delos, Hail Diana, Leto's child. But, Diana, God damn these names, Di Dian, Diana Sidoris, Dionysodorus, there we go, Dion Dionysodorus says that this pian is not his. He also composed a fable in the style of, in the style of Aesop. Not very artistically, and it begins, Aesop, one day did the sage counsel give to the Corinthian magistrates not to trust the cause of virtue to the people's judgment. So he died, but the Athenians immediately repented of their action, so that they closed all the palestrae in Gymnasia, and they banished his accusers and condemned Miletus to death. But they honored Socrates with a brazen statue, which they erected in the place where the sacred vessels are kept, and it was the work of Lysippus. But Anatus had already left Athens, and the people of Heraclea banished him from the city the day of his arrival. But Socrates was not the only person who met with this treatment at the hands of the Athenians. But many other men received the same. For as uh, Heracle Heraclides says, they find Homer 50 drachmas as a madman. And they said that uh, Tyrtaeus was out of his wits, but they honored Asidamus before uh, Aeschylus with a brazen statue, and Euripides reproaches him for their conduct in, in his uh, Palamedes, saying, Ye have slain, ye have slain, O Greeks, the wise, all the all wise nightingale, the favorite of the muses, guiltless all. And enough has been said on his this head. But Philoporus says that Eur Euripides died before Socrates. And he was born as Apollodorus in his chronicle asserts. In the archonship of Apsiphion. In the fourth year of the 77th Olympiad. On the sixth day of the month, Thargelion when the Athenians purify their city. And when the citizens of Delos say that Diana was born. And he died in the first year of the 95th Olympian, being 70 years of age. And this is the calculation of Demetrius Valerius. For some say that he was but 60 years old when he died. Oh, chat, we're on the last page. <laughs> Both he and Euripides were pupils of Anaxagoras. And Euripides was born in the first year of the 75th Olympiad. And they all couldn't ship all Calades. But Socrates appears to me to have also discussed occasionally subjects of natural philosophy. Since he very often disputes about prudence and foresight, as Xenophon tells us, although he at the same time asserts that all his conversations were about moral philosophy. And Plato, in his Apology, mentions the principle of Anaxagoras and other natural philosophers, which Socrates denies, and he in his reality expressing his own sentiments about them, though he attributes them all to Socrates. And Aristotle tells us that a certain one of the, ma the Magi, or the Magi, came from Syria to Athens, and blamed Socrates for many parts of his conduct, and also foretold that he would come to a violent death, and we, uh, and we ourselves have written this epigram on him. Drink now, O Socrates, in the realms of Jove. For truly did the god pronounce you wise, 
and he who said so is himself all wisdom. You drank the poison which your country gave, but they drink wisdom from your godlike voice. He had, as Aristotle tells us in the third book of, of his uh, poetics, a contest with a man of the name of Antiochus of Lemnos, and with Antipho, an interpreter of prodigies, as Pythagoras had with Cylon of Crotona. And Homo was alive with Sagaris, and after his death with Xenophanes, the Colophonian, and Hesiod too in his lifetime with Cercops. And after his death with the same Xenophanes, and Pindar with Ebony freaking Eponemenes of Cos and Thales of sort of Thales with Phyrexides, and Bias with Salaris of Rini, and Pentacus with Antimenius, and Alacus, I mean no such shit fuck, fuck up his name. Alexis, and Anaxagoras with Sosabius, and Simonides with Timocreon. Oh, these names! God damn! Of those who succeed him, and who are called the Socratic School, the chiefs were Plato, Xenophon, and Antithenes. And of the ten, as they are called, the four most eminent were Aeschines, Phaedo, Euclides, and Aristippus. But we must first speak of Xenophon, and after him, Antithenes, among the Cynics, then of the Socratic school, and so about Plato, since he is the chief of the ten sects, and the founder of the first academy, and the regular series of them shall proceed in this matter. There is also another Socrates, a historian, who wrote a description of Argus. And another, a peripatetic uh, philosopher, a native of, uh, of Bithynia, sorry, Bitha Bithynia, Shh. I can't read today, chat, holy crap. Bithynia, Bithynia, and another of a writer of epigrams, and another, a native of Cos, who wrote the Invocations of the Gods. Okay, we are now officially done with Socrates. That was quite a long one, which makes sense, given he's Socrates. But, uh, yeah, let's discuss the very last portions of what I just read. Okay, so where do I begin? Where did I begin last time? I started with, uh, okay, so, um, the domestic abuse. Uh, the domestic abuse that he did not commit, but his wife did. Yes, chat, um... Apparently, uh, Socrates' wife, Xanthope, used to beat him. And also just yell at him. She used, to, she used to verbally abuse him as well as physically. Even in public sometimes. But apparently, uh, Socrates didn't mind it that much. Or I guess from his point of view is, well... Uh, if I can handle a bitch like this, then I can pretty much handle any woman. It's essentially what he said. Uh, his exact quote was essentially, um... Where was it? Where was it? Where was it? Hold on. What he said was kind of based. Hold on. What did he say? He said, uh... Ah, uh, where's the quote? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Where, where, where's the quote? There we go. He said, and he used to say that one ought to live with a restive woman, just as horsemen manage violent-tempered horses, and as they, he said, when they have once mastered them, are easily able to manage all others. That's whoo. That's kind of so. That's a little bit too base, Socrates. I don't know if I can say this on Twitch. <laughs> Some people might take offense at what you said, and even though what you say is true. Socrates knows how to handle all the ladies, chat, because uh, 
he got the most uh, angry bitch of them all. But he knows how to handle her, <laughs> according to Socrates. Uh, okay, enough of that. Apparently the priests of Delphi recognize him as the wisest of all men. Or sorry, the wisest of all mortals. Which, chat, always notice, always know this, chat. A true wise man never calls himself a wise man. They might say they are wise, but they'll never say that they are a wise man. A wise man is a title given to you by other people. Always keep that in mind. Well, while it might be... Okay, Socrates might be the one guy who might unironically call himself a wise man. Because he's fucking Socrates. But generally speaking, your peers have to recognize you as, you know, a really intelligent person worthy of the title of wise man. So, the fact that, you know, Priestess and his peers recognize him as the wise man, it, it goes without saying that Socrates was a true wise man. He's not just a normal philosopher. He is a wise man. And what else is here? Da -da 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 -da. He incurred great envy into others, because why would he not? Dude was just kind of happy living his life. Oh yeah, and apparently he uh, he pissed off so many people that uh, he uh, got tried for, I guess, his different, his different take on the gods. And someone named Miletus tried to get him uh, prosecuted. Same with someone named uh, Anaton. Or, sorry, Anatus. So Anatus and Miletus tried to get this man uh, essentially persecuted and tried to death, and, well, they succeeded. Uh, poor Socrates, um, he got put to death. He was forced to drink poison. But, um, Socrates didn't seem all that upset by it, honestly. He actually seemed very in peace. He kind of just took the poison and was just like, well, this is just how I die. This is, this is my fate. This is it. Drinks it, dies. That was it. He didn't die a whining bitch. He didn't, he didn't go out like a bitch, chat. This fucking guy just drank the poison, like bombs up. This is my time. And that was it. And apparently him doing that inspired a lot of people, because a lot of people will always bring this up about Socrates' death. About how he just kind of... He kind of just peacefully accepted his demise, but didn't bear any grudges against anyone. Which is a very... A very enlightened thing to do, in my opinion. To blame no one. To not show resentment at the world. That is, that is a true wise man. That's someone who has reached the peak of Ataraxia. Now, what is Ataraxia, Jack? Well, Ataraxia is, I think, Greek for, like, tranquility or something. He was a purely tranquil man with no perturbance of mind, who accepted his death in the most manly way possible. It gobbled down the poison. And died as himself. As a real man. As a philosopher. And what else is here? Let's see here. Da, da, da. Oh yeah, after um, people realized that was a fucking mistake to do, uh, they killed Miletus, and uh, Anatus went somewhere else, but Anatus was um, fucking exiled, so he can't really go anywhere. So I guess you could say justice was served in a way, but that's not what's important. What's important was the impact that Socrates had on later generations of philosophers. His biggest pupil being Plato, which I'm pretty sure everyone's heard of Plato. But we will not be reading Plato tonight. No, for the next person after Socrates is actually uh, Xenophon. Xenophon is next in the order, and I believe after Xenophon it's Plato? Or is it someone else? Hold on, let me... Uh... Let me, uh, remember. Oh, no, sorry, no. It's Xenophon, Achenes, Aristippus. These are all pretty short, by the way. When does Plato start? I wonder when Plato starts, because Plato might also be his own stream, if I'm being perfectly honest. 
Oh damn, Aristippus is long. Uh, hold on for a second, chat. Hold, hold, hold on for a second. I want to look ahead and see how much I'll be reading for next week. Because next week is also going to be a kind of shortest stream as well. Uh, Plato begins... Oh my god. When do we get to Plato? God damn it. Oh yeah, fucking A. Plato's his own book. He starts on the... Ooh, okay, never mind, chat. There's going to be a... Quite a number of philosophers to get through before we actually get to Plato. So, uh, I'm gonna have to say I'll see you in two weeks in regards to Plato. But, I guess before we read Plato, let's read about Xenophon next week. And, uh, some of, some of the other, uh, the other students of, uh, Socrates. So yeah, chat, that was Socrates, as told by, uh, Diogenes Laertius. Now it is time for the retro portion of the stream. But before I do that chat, I must be a bee! For I am quite thirsty and require a drink of water. So excuse me while I go to the BRB screen and procure myself a refreshment. And when I return, I shall play Pikmin 2! So stay tuned! I'm going to be gone for like maybe a couple minutes. So yeah, stay tuned. Return! I am here, Chad! I am here! Okay, time to start off Pikmin. Excuse me while I get going. I got my refreshments ready. And I'm ready to play some Pikmin. More specifically, what I'm trying to accomplish this stream, Chad, is I'm trying to uh, get my purples ready because... Um, uh, there's a treasure in the game that r literally requires 100 uh, purple Pikmin to get. So, uh, yeah. I'm definitely getting that tonight. May as well get it out the way, you know. May as well get that out the way, because uh, it's, it's definitely a pain in the ass. Alright. And my controller is not working. Oh, it's, it's not... 
Why do I always do this, chat? I'm always like, my controller's not working. No, it's unplugged. It's always unplugged, damn it. Why? I never unplug it intentionally. I don't unplug it intentionally. It just kind of happens. It just kind of happens, chat, and it's annoying. By the way, chat, is my voice crackling? That's an issue I've been trying to resolve, and I thought I fixed it, but I listened to one of my VODs, and it seemed like my voice crackle came back. At least when I'm playing a game. I notice this only happens when I'm playing a game. It does not happen when, uh... It, it does not happen when, uh... You know, during my reading streams. I think you hear my voice perfectly clear in my reading streams. But, um... In my, uh... Actual gaming streams, whether I'm, you know... Playing on my, uh... Toy Legitimate Hardware of emulated games... Uh... Or from on Steam, my voice starts to crack a little bit. I really hope that's not the case anymore, but... Because if so, there's a lot of tinkering I need to do. Which I barely have time anymore to try and fix. But I will find time, damn it. Anyway, chat, to the Valley of Repose. For day 19 shall be a day of uh, retrieving um, purple pigments. Oh, chat, I'm, I'm pressing my freaking, uh, I'm pressing my freaking A button right now, and I hate it. I absolutely despise it. Oh my god, I hate touching this thing. Oh, let's take 30 reds. I actually don't know if I need this many Pikmin. I honestly don't know what I need, if I'm being perfectly honest. I honestly probably don't even need that this many Pikmin, in generally speaking. You know what? Actually, no. Wait, hold on, hold on. Go, go back and go back and go back in. Actually, no, no, no. Let's start, let's, start, let's start with 30. Let's start with 30, actually. We still have a whole day. So let's, uh... Let's kill some enemies that we find and take their corpses back and shit. Well, actually, no, not not yet, not yet, not yet. Come on, little guys. I highly doubt that I'll need uh, <clears throat> any other color. I think reds are fine right now because I think reds are still like, yeah, reds are still like. The majority of Pikmin that I have. Are the Cannon Beetles back? That's the real question. I don't think the Cannon Beetles are back. Which is good. Okay, the Cannon Beetles are not back. Good. Oh, kill, 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 kill. We saved them. We saved them. I love the detail of, like, you being able to save your Pikmin if you kill an enemy fast enough that they're being attacked. Okay. I honestly don't need 30, but I'm taking them with me just in case. You know, in retrospect, it probably is a bad idea to bring 30. But I kind of don't care. Especially since we're at this part of the game where... We're about to genuinely beat it. Oh, 
Okay, where's the exit? 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 There it is. Yeah, we're not playing around, chat. We're just we're just going for uh We're we're just going for um uh those flower buds. Okay, one more watch him. President, go out and find the next hole. Keep going. I don't know how many purple Pikmin at a time I can make. I want to say 10 to 15. I think. Oh god, okay. Just be very careful about this. Just keep going, President. Just keep going. We don't care about these guys. Oh, so are those mountains in the background? I swear, the caves on Pikmin 2 are weird, chat. When you actually pay attention to what the environment looks like. Oh, wait, hold on. White flowers? Hold on, white flowers? Did I get the wrong cave? I mean, I guess we can make more white pigment while we're here, but... I thought this cave in particular had purple flower buds. Was I incorrect? Was I, was I incorrect about which cave to go into for purples? I swore it was this one. Or am I am I am I generally incorrect, chat? I, I don't know. I, I I honestly don't know. Oh god. Uh hold on, chat, hold on. Hold on for a second, let me pause the game. Something weird happened. Where the game is not showing properly on my screen. You can probably see it correctly on the stream, but uh, it's uh, showing me something different. I don't know how to fix this. This is, this is such a weird phenomenon that's never occurred before. Um, You know, here's what I'm going to do. I can I can still see my stream on OBS. So I'm going to play like this for a second. I'm going to go to uh the next cave entrance. Or rather delve deeper into the cave. And then as soon as it saves, I'm gonna reset the game real quick. So that I can, uh, so that I can, uh, fix it for me. Oh, wait, no, hold on. Let me just, uh, use some magic to hide the screen real quick. Okay. That was so weird. Oh, what the hell? Huh. Okay, never mind. I 
I don't need to reset the game. I figured out the issue a different way. Huh? How did I trigger... I don't know how I triggered these bomb spiders, but I did. Not that it matters. We we don't we don't care about the bomb spiders because we're not we're not even fighting them. Oh yeah, there was something I wanted to say earlier. Oh yeah, chat. At some point I will be buying myself a new controller because holy shit. I am getting sick and tired of my controller's A button. It feels so unnatural to touch. Uh, some some new gamer equipment's in order, chat. Okay. This has to be the floor of Purple Pikmin. It has to be. There's no way it's not. Okay, it's definitely not. What the hell? Okay, one more. Watch your Pikmin. Was I wrong about this cave? Chat, I could have swore this cave had purple flowers. Also just watching the boys because I heard Gatling Gunks nearby and I don't want them to get shot at. But yeah, I will be buying myself um, some new controllers because I, I need to be able to comfortably press the A button again and it not feel like a stuck mess. Sub-level 8. Okay, it, this is the cave. Chat, this is in fact the cave. Okay, okay, okay. Chat, this is in fact the cave. I, okay, I was right. I was, I was kind of worried. I thought, um... I thought... That, uh... I went into the wrong cave, but this is it. We can farm purple Pikmin here, because there's always, like, uh, there's always, like, um, fifth, there's always, uh, three purple flower buds here. And you can easily grow, like, 15 Pikmin at a time. And in retrospect, I didn't need to bring this many Pikmin with me. But I did anyway. Okay, grow, 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 pluck, 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 pluck. Oh, we're getting a lot of juice here, too. Some spray juice. That's really good. Okay, you reds are going to become purples. You three become purples. Uh, how many of which do I have? Uh, I'll get rid of some blues. Or I guess a blue and a yellow. Okay, why not? Why not, you know? Get them purples. Actually, I think there's a geyser here, too. 
So we have to go down eight levels just to get our Pikmin. That kind of sucks. But it's whatever. Because by the end of the day, we're going to have a uh, hundred uh, purples, which will make it all worth it. Purple flowers, nonetheless. Okay, let's go. Let's leave. All our all our reds are gone, chat. Hello there, Shma. How are you? Just playing some Pikmans. More specifically, I'm farming for purple Pikmin right now. Because, uh, as I said earlier, I need to get 100 purples so I can pick up a fucking dumbbell. Okay. How many do we have total now? Okay, we have 71. That's actually, uh... We only need 30 more, which means we need to go in there approximately two times, and we're good. But nice seeing you here, Shma. I guess I'll just bring five reds at a time. Also, why are they leaves? They need to be leaves. You could have gave me flowers, game, but you gave me leaves. Well, I appreciate it, Shmo. Thank you for showing up and saying hi. Okay, let's see here. We're about to head into the cave and make some more purples. But I gotta deal with slow poke reds. What was that? What was that? I thought I heard a cannon beetle, but I'm like, that's impossible. They didn't spawn today. Hurry up! Pokey Oaks. Are you saying that because the reds have, like, pointy noses? Have you ever played Pikmin before, Shma? Because Pikmin is a very fun... Uh... This game counts as an RTS. It's, it's a real-time strategy game. Some people would say this is like Baby's first real-time strategy game, and yeah, I agree. It's very simple enough to understand like the mechanics of it and how to like strategize and plan out your day and whatnot. So I think Pikmin 2 is more about it being more of a traditional collectathon. Oh, you never played Pikmin before, but they look cute? Oh yeah, Pikmin are cute. Though it is kind of sad that they live in a uh, a very dangerous world where pretty much every creature in the world tries to kill them. Because Pikmin are the bomb of the food chain. It sucks being a Pikmin. <laughs> Which, funny enough, uh, Shma, in Pikmin 1, Pikmin were, were so much at the bottom of the food chain that they were kind of going ex extinct when Olimar found them. Olimar, this is the main character, Olimar. The, this little red guy here. He crash lands in the first game and, like... He just discovers, like, this weird onion thing. And because uh, 
But one of the, okay, when he, when he discovers the onion thing, a seed pops out. Then he plucks the seed. And then the little red guys come out. And then he's just like, well, these, these little red guys look like the carrots on my world. Which are called Pick Pick Carrots. And that's why he calls them Pikmin. Okay, we don't need to game more white Pikmin. We need to keep going to deeper into the hole here. Yes, growing friends. Pikmin reproduce by killing things and then putting them in their onions and then they make more Pikmin. Okay, let's see here. Ah, there's the cave. But yeah, Shmug, if you haven't played a Pikmin game before, I, I highly recommend it. It's really fun. So I will say, Pikmin 1 and Pikmin 2 are very different. Because Pikmin 1 is very... Uh, Pikmin 1 is a little bit unforgiving. I mean, so is Pikmin 2, to be honest, but they're both unforgiving in different ways. I I'll say this. Pikmin 1 and Pikmin 2 have very different kill philosophies. Yes, the third one is definitely more like like the first one, where the, it's a more Pikmin one and three are more like about planning your day and being able to collect all the collectibles uh, on the world map as fast as you can. Pikmin two is more about uh, dungeon diving. Or dungeon crawling, rather. Oh god, that thing is roaming. I gotta hurry up, I gotta hurry up. Where's the cave, where's the cave, where's the cave, where's the cave? Hold on, hold on. I know it's just five Pikmin, but uh, I, don't want them to, I don't want them to die. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Hold on, sorry. Oh god. He's not roaming over here, is he? Oh god, he's getting close! Go in the cave! Okay, where was I? <laughs> sorry, I had to make sure I didn't get shot at. But, um... Pikmin 1 is all about, like... Yeah, uh, let's collect the ship part. Or rather, you always do your damage to find one ship part in a single day. So that way, uh, you have enough time to collect all your parts. Because Pikmin 1's more about collecting all your ship parts before 30 in-game days pass. Because apparently, Olimar does not breathe oxygen. Yes, fun fact. Olimar does not breathe, breathe uh, oxygen. Oxygen is poisonous to him. That's why he wears a helmet. I think I read somewhere that Olimar breathes methane gas or some shit. Which is really weird to think about. I mean, he is an alien, but still. This man lives on methane fumes. <laughs> That's so bizarre! Oh god! Luckily they can't harm anybody, but they're annoying.
Also, I apologize for losing my tra my train of thought again. This happens sometimes. When I'm playing a game and then just something happens and I'm just like, Oh god, I gotta focus now! But, um, yeah, Pikmin 1's about collecting ship parts as fast as possible. Pikmin 2, you can take your time. But the challenge of Pikmin 2 is more so... Not only can, can you also collect every treasure in the game, but can you also not get ass blasted by all the dangerous enemies that are in this game? Because the enemies in this game are relentless. The devs were very sadistic when it came to the enemies of Pikmin 2. I mean, some enemies literally have a gun on them. I shit you not. Wild animals in the wild with firearms. <laughs> But that just speaks to the danger and weirdness of Pikmin 2. Which I quite enjoy, by the way. Wait, no! I didn't mean to... I went to the... I went to the hole on instinct. I didn't mean to go to the hole. I didn't mean to go to the hole! I meant to leave! Damn it! I meant to leave. I mean, it's not like I need to fight the boss or anything, so... Oh! The guys are just right there. Never mind, we're fine. How how kind of the game to put a geyser right there for me to escape? Okay, we got 15 more purples. Now we need to go there. We need to go into that cave one more time, chat. So we can get 100 purples, and then we can immediately... Actually, maybe not immediately, but we can most definitely get... Uh... We can most definitely get... Um... The dumbbell when we go to... Uh... Um, Wistful Wilds. Also, what time is it right now? It is approximately 9.15. Okay, we got it. We're actually, we're actually making good time, chat. We got like 40-ish minutes left. We can absolutely uh, get our purples real quick. Then we can leave, and then we can... Uh, Go to Perplexing Pool and collect treasure there. I don't know if I'll have enough time to do a Submerged Castle this stream. Because I wanted to do Submerged Castle this stream, but I don't know if I should. You know? I don't, I don't know if I should. <clears throat> Granted, Submerged Castle is like, what, five to seven floors? I still have to, like, take my time collecting, uh, treasure in there, though. So it's like, that's gonna prolong the time and just like, hmm. I may need to look, use my time wisely for today. Especially considering that I need to go to bed at, like, 10 p.m. So, here's what I'm gonna do. Oh, God, no! Okay. Oh! Oh, God! Okay, I need to not have my finger resting on my broken A button. Because I almost I almost threw my, my pigment off a cliff chat. That would have ended terribly. So yeah, chat, the plan is get the last 15 purple Pikmin, then go to Perplexing Pool, 
and then collect all the treasure on the overworld. And then, uh, the next stream I'll do Submerged Castle. And then next stream I also may or may not do Dream Den. Dream Den being the final, uh, the final dungeon in Pikmin 2. That has the final boss in it. Should I do Submerged Castle real quick? I mean, real quick, quote-unquote. I, I don't think I can. Especially considering it's, like, what, 920 right now? I no. Chat, I am very tempted to do freaking Submerged Castle. I really want to do Submerged Castle right now. But I'm like, that's just not wise to do at this moment in time. I should be patient and just wait next week. You know? I should just wait next week for Submerged Castle. But Submerged Castle is just, you know, right over there, you know. In Perplexing Pool, I can just go there and be ready. But I don't have the time! <laughs> I don't have the time, but I really want to do Submerged Castle. And suffer greatly. I'm kidding. Oh god. Okay. Hold on. Where's the cave? Where's the cave? Or the, the hole? Where's the hole? Where's the hole? Oh, there's the hole. Alright, chat. Two more levels. Two more levels. Two more levels! Oh, hell no. Nope, nope, nope. We travel as a group. We travel as a group. The gallon gunks are right there. No. All right, chat, time to farm. Wait, what the hell? Huh. Okay, throw these last reds in there. I also didn't mean to make more yellows and blues, but it is what it is. Also, quit attacking that egg. We stop. Okay, get the purple. Hurry up, guys. We're this close to having a full 100 of purples. Alright, so, uh, blues and yellows. Uh, all blues, cause fuck it. All yellows, cause fuck it. And with this chat, we have 100 purples! Now we no longer need to worry about, uh, the dumbbell treasure. Which we'll probably be getting in a different stream when we have to go back to Wistful Wilds. Because, if I recall correctly, the dumbbell treasure, I think, is the last treasure 
on the uh, in Whistle Wilds that's like uh, above ground. A save. Blah, 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 blah. Let's count. Let's count. Let's count. Let's count. How many we got? How many we got? We got 101. Nice. Okay, we can just end the day, honestly. There's nothing else to do, and there's not much pigment to make here, so... Yeah, we are now officially done with, uh... This level. We, we never have to come back here again. Especially since, if I recall correctly, chat, I think Submerge Castle... No, Sub Submerge Castle definitely has... Uh, purple flower buds. Because, uh... Well, the purple Pikmin are required to beat the boss of that particular dungeon. We lost a lot of reds to gain a bunch of purples. Bluey, are you eating well? When you were a boy, you were quite skinny. So I made you clean your plate. Be sure to cook suspicious food before eating it. Okay, so Bow Repose is done. Awakening Wood is done. Okay, so that dumbbell is confirmed to be the last treasure. Wait, what the hell? Hole of here. Wait, wait, wait. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What was in the hole of heroes that I missed? <laughs> oh, wait. I remember. I remember. Oh, God damn. I remember. I actually do remember that. Okay. All right. You know what, chat? Uh, I think for day 20, I'll go to Wistful Wild, get the dumbbell anyway, and, uh, get that last treasure in Hole of Heroes. Because holy fuck, I completely forgot that I forgot a treasure in Hole of Heroes. Because fuck Hole of Heroes, to be honest. Also, before I bring my purples out. Time to attack with the reds. Also, do I not have any, uh... Our reds anymore? That's crazy to think about. Oh, we can easily make some more real quick. Fuck out of here, fuck out of here. Okay. You guys over here, handle this. Oh no! Stop drinking all the juice! Let some of the others get some of it too! Okay, we got a lot of day left, so we don't need to necessarily rush to get the, the last treasure part. 
that's in the the Cave of Heroes. I would say I approximately need 30 blue Pikmin, but I'm going to bring 40 blue Pikmin just in case. Just in case any of them die. Which is a very real possibility. Okay, time to get the purple boys out. Get that last treasure. This is this is terrifying, chat. One hundred purples. This is an ungodly sight. One hundred of these fuckers. Look at him go, chat! Look at him go! Oh my god, they're slow as fuck. I completely forgot they were that slow. <laughs> wow, um... Yeah... It's fine, though. It's fine. Uh, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna leave the president, like, right there. I'm gonna have Olimar explore ahead. Olimar is going to go off to the, to the Hall of Heroes and see if he can find anything of interest. Okay, those fuckers are back. And then... Okay, that hole there. Okay. Are they almost there yet? Holy crap, it's gonna be like... The, the day's gonna be half over by the time they reach here. Why do I have to make them that slow? Come on, Nintendo. You didn't have to make them that slow. You didn't have to make him that slow, Nintendo! I wonder if I can beat these guys before the Purple Pikmin reach the other ship. Oh, I won't be able to because they'll fly away once they reach half health. Oh, that's, that sucks. Never mind. I was up for the challenge, too. I forgot they f they fly away when they're when they when they're losing. They're still not there yet. Come on! Oh wow, that asshole really ate the whole bridge. Actually, hold on. I'm gonna need to. Uh... I want to bring 50 blues. Yeah, that's that's the plan. I want to bring 50 blues into uh, the Cave of Heroes. One, because I want to have a good amount of Pikmin to fight with when I'm on that one particular floor. The Doomsday Apparatus! Oh yeah, I want, I want a good amount of Pikmin to fight with. And two, there's a lot of shit I need to rebuild. Like, I just noticed, I got I gotta rebuild that bridge now. God damn it. The goddamn ladybug fucker destroyed my bridge, and now I gotta fix it. This sucks. I mean, I still have the whole day to do this, but still, it's just inconvenient.
some flowers. Take their bodies back. Okay, the Woolly Wonk hasn't come back yet. Okay, present, you watch over them. Well, these guys bring uh, the corpses back. We're also going to have uh, these guys kill that one enemy that's over here. Dude, they're still working. Bring it on, bitch. Come on. You know you want to. Right here. Oh, shit. Come on. You know you want this. Oh, shit. And he's dead. Bring his corpse back to base. I wonder if I can take the... the sheer bugs down with just 11 blues. Probably not. Oh, I did! Wow, never mind. I was completely wrong. I destroyed them with ease. These guys done yet? No, they're still building. Okay, so those guys are done. I'm still in I'm still gonna bring only an uh fifty chat, because um I don't I don't want any uh unnecessary amount of Pikmin dying because I had an overabundance of Pikmin. It's always best to enter caves with less than hundred Pikmin. Especially since you never know which Pikmin, uh, which Pikmin caves might have, uh, Bowman in it. Which, if I recall correctly, there's only three. But I can, I can never remember which ones have them or not, if I'm being perfectly honest with you. Come on now, hurry up, hurry up. There we go, we got our 50. Okay, now we're ready. Now now, now we're ready to get that one goddamn treasure that's uh, left in the, the Cave of Heroes. Now let's see if we can survive with all 50 of our blue Pikmin. Oh, wow, the day is almost over. Yeah, Pikmin days are really short, chat. I, I always tend to forget this. I don't know if they made Pikmin 3 days slightly longer in comparison. Or if they're still the same length as they always been. Okay, okay, chat, time to, uh, do the strat of... Chat, 
just go for the hole. That's the strat, chat. We just go for the hole. We, we already know, we already know what floor we need to get to. No need to waste time. We, we already know what floor we need to get to. Wait, what? Huh? There shouldn't be a treasure on this floor. Oh no. Oh no, I don't like this. I don't I don't like this chat. Oh, this is bad. I want to say I can ignore the one bug and I'll be okay, but Oh Ow! This fucking asshole right here. I wonder who's the sadist at Nintendo who was like, remember the, sn the swooping snitch bug? Let's make another one, except for the captains. Why would you do this? The, the snitch bug was already bad enough. You had to, to do one for the captains, too. Oh, god damn it! No! Kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him! Come, 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 Oh, there's fiery blowhawks here. Oh no. Oh no. Which which is the fastest way to the cave exit? Oh, there's two fiery blowhogs. God damn it. Uh. Wait. Oh, there's a wall there, too? Come on. You know what, chat? I'm actually very glad I decided to bring 50. Because, uh. Run! 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 Holy shit. God damn it. Oh, my blues are leaves now. Fuck. Okay, one of you has to approach me. Never mind. Fuck off. No! No, 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 no! No! Fuck! Fuck you, game! Fuck you! You killed three innocent blues! No, okay, chat, now I'm very happy I decided to bring at least 50. What the fuck? Like, holy shit! Oh, I forgot how... F well, actually, no, I didn't forget how shitty the Cave of Heroes is. I actually quite remember how shitty the Cave of Heroes is. 
I'm very sad. Uh, very sad. Very sad. Three had to die. They would have all survived if they were flowers. But alas, I I had to. Uh, uh, alas, I had to freaking encounter a bomb spider. We are not fighting any of the bosses. We have no need to. Full of heroes, sub level fives. Oh, it's it's. Mm, never mind. Mamutas are still mamutas. Stop! Stop! Let me go. Fucking mamuta! Finally, holy crap. Fuck Mamutas. Please tell me the, the, the butterflies are still there. They're, they're probably not. They're probably all gone by now. Oh, god damn, I missed my chance because the fucking Mamuta. Ugh. Well, honestly, I have... A lot of blues, so it's honestly not too big of a uh a, a downside here. Oh oh no 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 run guys run Run I did not mean to throw it into yellow. Yellow was not the color I was trying to make. Oh, I fucked up. I tried to do the glitch real quick, but I fucked it up. It's fine. I'm kind of not happy that I have all these yellows now. They, they were not supposed to be born. I, I, I wanted to make some reds, actually, but you know what? I probably should make more blues. Okay, let's not leave. Let's go to the next floor. I'm definitely not ending the stream until I get that final treasure, that's for certain. Okay, this is the floor. So I might have to die.
on, come 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 on. Woo! No one died to the Woolly Wog. Let's go. Funny enough, chat, the Woolly Wog is what fucking uh, prevented me from getting uh, the final treasure here last time, too. But we took care of him. So you guys make that. Um, we're gonna split up the party. We'll have Olimar watch over the yellows. Which there are only nine of. The rest are gonna have to fight their way to the trigger. Okay, come on, go for me, go for me, go for me. Nice, we're killing everything. We are killing everything. We're gonna make sure no one can interfere. Ooh, one died. That's unfortunate. It happens. All right. Nice. I think that was the last threat in this room. Unless the game is like Bomb Spider or something, or Woolly Wog. Oh god. Okay. Okay. Nice. No unnecessary deaths. We love to see it. All that for some goddamn peanut butter. Some goddamn Skippy peanut butter. Or nutrient silo. Gather, gather the bodies. G -g gather the bodies, because fuck it. I want this entire room cleared. I'm so glad I brought 50. Shit, shit would have went so south, chat. If I went with any, any less, anything less than 50 would have, would have guaranteed this mission to be a failure. Oh, all right. Everyone get your juice. Bring those bodies over. It's not really necessary, but I just I just want the extra money. All right, come on, guys. And Olimar is leading now. Okay, now we just need to find a geyser and leave. We we don't need to finish this cave. We just need to leave. So next guys are we see, uh, we out. Oh fuck, it's this room! Fuck, fuck, fuck! No! Okay, fine. Okay, okay. Let's be smart about this. Is there no guns in this room? Oh, 
Oh shit. Oh, we have damage? I'm just trying to make sure that, uh... I'm just trying to make sure that that uh, green one doesn't notice the one that my uh, the other captain in the back. Okay, nice. <gasps> oh fuck that that would have been that would have been bad. Okay, he doesn't notice my existence. That's good. He's like, he kind of knows I'm there. Nice. Okay, I guess we gotta beat this guy. Focus on Olimar. Look at me, bitch! Look at me! No, 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 Okay. Surprisingly, no deaths. Fantastic. Oh, and this was the this was the freaking one we had to get to. Out of curiosity, was there a geyser here? I don't think there was. I think I I think I had to finish that fight. Yeah, I had to do that fight. That sucked. Luckily, that boss fight's not really hard. to give me a poisonous one okay so there's a geyser and we can leave but uh since we have boltman let's uh let's make some uh 
some Pikmin. Was that the only, um... That wasn't the only, uh... multi cami bub flower thing, or was it? Or... I don't know. Regardless... These guys are getting turned into Pikmin. Ooh, Chad, I just realized. I had over 40 Pikmin um, outside before I went into the cave with 50. We're going to leave with 72 Pikmin. What does the game do whenever you leave a cave with more Pikmin than you'll have uh, outside ex that exceeds 100? I I'm just curious. Will the Pikmin just kind of go into the onion? Will they die? What happens? Wistful Wild. So I have 55. Wait. Wait. Wait, what happened to them? Did they die? Did they... What happened to my... I had some yellows, right? Or did I not have yellows? What happened there? I, I, I don't know what happened. They didn't... Did they... Did I keep them? Because the game seemed to prioritize the... The Pikmin that were in the ground. They, st they still stayed outside. They didn't die, did they? I honestly have no idea, Chad. I'm just kind of baffled by what happened just now. Uh, you know what? Let's end the day. There's nothing else to do. And we essentially accomplished all we need to do. We got the last piece in the cave. And we got the last piece out on the Wistful Wilds. Uh, yeah. So go to Sunset. We actually did pretty good today. Today's report. How much Pikmin did we gain? That's that's what I want to know. Nice! We have over a thousand Pikmin. Two hundred and fourteen died so far. I'm kind of embarrassed by that because I, I I believe I said like early on, like a couple of streams ago, that. I could definitely beat the game with, like, less than uh, 100 Pikmin dying, and I'm worried twice that. So, yeah. Anyway. Papa, I'm going to prep school. Mama said that if I don't study hard, I can't become a proper lady. Did I write a nice proper mail? Do tell, Papa.
All right. We are on day 21, and the only cave left in Wistful Wild is the Dream Den, which will be done at a later time, because it's time to end the stream. And also, even before we do Dream Den, we need to go to Perplexing Pool, get the rest of the treasure above ground, and then do Submerged Castle. Which Submerged Castle is going to be the very first thing we do. So prepare yourselves for uh, next Thursday when I go to Submerged Castle. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a rough one, I think, because uh, Submerged Castle is a very rough dungeon. But I can do it because I'm an epic gamer. No, goddamn me, but no, stop, stop, stop it! I'm ending the game. Do the chat screen. Ha! Huh. Anyway, chat. Thank you all for stopping by to give me a watch as I read uh, the lives and pains of eminent philosophers. And I got to read about Socrates, and then you get to see me uh, play a little bit of Pikmin, too. And by the way, tomorrow, chat, as per usual on the indie game stream days, I'll be playing the Hollow Knight! And I'll be exploring more of the unknown in Hollow Nest. And then, of course, on Saturday, I'll be playing some more Nero and Tamata and destroying uh, innocent robots. Uh, innocent, no, no, I mean, uh, dastardly, dastardly robots who are all evil. Yes. I am the good one. Indeed, I am. But yes, yeah, chat up. Uh, come tomorrow, and uh, the streams will begin at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. See you then, chat. See you then. Dinks the Strix, signing off.